Hello, it's Carol Martine. I'm back in my studio. It's Saturday afternoon, and I just got back from a meeting of my uh, American Needlepoint Guild. The meeting was in Fernandina Beach, which is north of Jacksonville in Florida, and I had a lovely, lovely time. This is such a wonderful group of ladies. We're called the Eight Flags uh, Needlepoint Chapter, and I shared some of my uh, work that I uh, was, have been doing so far with you on uh, YouTube, and they seemed quite interested. And then I thought, while well, I was driving home, because it's about a 40-minute trip, that, well, spur of the moment, Carol, let's go and see if I can make a little bit of magic with this camera, uh, because... I wanted to be able to speak to you and have uh, see you and have you see me. Isn't that incredible? I actually think that I can see you, that you can see me, and also show you things down here on my workplace. Well, my husband, who knows all things about this, told me that there's this handy-dandy little groove in this little tripod that's holding this camera. He said, now, if you just tilt the camera down, it will show. And I said, well, okay, let me see. And you know what? He's right. It does. So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time, not too much, sharing what I've been doing kind of behind the scenes. As I told the ladies at the uh, Eight Flags this morning, I had started my mixed media adventure and kind of gave up some of my stitchery because I just was kind of overwhelmed on all of the things that I had to learn, uh, things that I hadn't done, things that I hadn't even known about doing. But lately, for about the last six months, giving up my needlepoint has really um, started to become almost a guilt. And I thought, let me see if I might try adding some needlepoint stitchery to mixed media. I have been working on that. I, in fact, I've just done uh, two um, videos on my channel, and I'm going to show you the thinking and how that has been working. And I'm also going to share a piece of original needlepoint that I've been working on just for me. Uh, it is not something that I would expect that you might be interested in doing because it's kind of in the category of a uh, major craziness, but I thought it might be enjoyable for you to watch a little bit of my process here and there. And then I have been also working on uh, some watercolor backgrounds and I wanted to show you the wonderful changes that I've been able to make. I'm also going to share uh, my last watercolor class lesson, or part of it, with you. So, here we go. I'm going to tilt this camera now, and let's hope for the best. Ready? I hope I don't make you woozy. All righty. Now, if everything just stays this way, we'll be all, we'll be all systems go. This is my Mona Vanna journal, in which, for the first time, I included some stitchery samples. Now, these are samples, basically they're swatches of stitchery that I had buried down in my stash. And this was the first opportunity in this journal that I got to include them, and I thought, you know, this is kind of neat looking. Let me think about maybe sharing some process for this and uh, giving some folks out there some ideas about using stitchery in needlepoint. And this is my first example of a piece that I thought might give my subbie some ideas about how to work on uh, doing 
needlepoint on perforated paper, and yes, this is paper, and this is the first project that I tried using some gouache. So I drew out this flower and leaf. I used my sepia micron. I used gouache to color and then did some stitchery. And I thought that you might enjoy seeing where this is going to end up when I go back to working in Monavana. I'm going to do some more of these because I have some more ideas of things that might be uh, enjoyable for you to watch and maybe for you to try out for your uh, stitchery. So we'll put Mona Vanna aside. And then now I'll show you the piece that I have been working on. And this is the Just For Me piece. As you can see, I have been planning a little bit. This piece is just starting. When I showed this on a short video, my first video on this, I was doing things a little differently, but I've changed uh, my tie downs to gold, and that's the nature of stitchery and expressive stitchery or creative stitchery, in which minds can be changed, and certainly mine does. It flips around sometimes like a worm. But so far, then, I have found a outline stitch for this star that works for me. I have added some gold to uh, play out the gold in the outline. And then, because I'm a collector of vintage 30s, 40s, 50s millinery flowers, I thought I might try that one. Maybe I went digging about in my stash and I found this and this was on a veil and they were very big in the 50s and early 60s and I ripped that apart. I thought that might work here. I have no idea how this is going to end up but I probably won't use all of this. I probably might not use any of it but this is a possibility. And then I dug a little further and I found this piece of metal that I had in a particular stash. Of course, when you put things away carefully, they're gone for life. So I did find this, and I thought, hmm, might that not make a pretty addition to this? And then I found this. I don't know where that's going to go or if it's going to go. But, so I thought I'd update you on what I've been sitting and working with, and it feels so good, I have to admit it, it feels so good to be back to my stitchery. Let's go aside now, and goodness, I'm really doing show and tell. On Monday mornings, I have been going to uh, back to my watercolor teacher, and one of the projects that we did, uh, was learning how to paint rocks, and I had just painted these rocks on uh, this piece of watercolor paper, and that's what I had in my uh, my carry bag, is a piece of blank paper with those rocks. And I said, well, now this girl is not going to. First, I thought I would just cut the paper, and I thought, no, that's crazy, and that's a waste. So, at the free time, at the end of class on Monday, I tried my hand and skies can be very tricky little pieces to work on so I put this sky on here and then I thought well the rock needs to be someplace so I plunked the rock down onto some I don't know whether this is grass dunes have no idea I'm again working expressively and that is something that is pretty hard to uh, shake after you have learned it and appreciated it with through mixed media and art journaling. 
doing what comes to you is just absolutely the most fun. So I'm going to work a little bit more on this uh, the day after tomorrow, and who knows what's going to happen. I don't. But so far, I'm quite happy. I've got this thing that shows sky, which I'm, I'm tickled with my sky. I, I like that sky. Oops, there goes the telephone. And some sand or dunes or whatever the sky is sitting on. I do hope that my husband answers that phone quickly because he's working out in his workshop uh, on his model airplanes. Ah, there it is. He got it. Good. And so I will be showing you the next time we talk to update you on what happens to this. Plan B is I turn the paper over and do something else. In some just for me videos in the fall, I had been working on learning how to color backgrounds. I wanted uh, strong, colorful backgrounds, and this was a learning piece for me. I learned and shared with you some of the techniques for, that I particularly like doing. I'd never done this I think be kind of thing before. So backgrounds and some of these flowers, oh, sorry, leaves, uh, were a learning curve that was really, really hard for me to do. The only one that I am utterly and totally unhappy with is this one, but live and learn. So I've set this one aside for now because Jenny demonstrated another technique, similar idea, but another technique, and I have worked on it and just love it. The idea is the same, the painting technique is the same, but then one applies saran wrap over the wet paint plunks down heavy books on top of it and lets it dry for maybe five, six hours. And look at the lovely print that that wadded up saran does to the watercolor. So this was the one that I did last. And, oops, I'm having a mind glitch now. There it is. That's a little bit better. All righty. This one, same principle, different colors, different colors, and yet I'm just loving that mottled dimensionality that you could certainly really not achieve uh, unless you are willing to uh, give it, become, make it become your life's work in watercolor. So, that is another ongoing project, but that's one that I'm thinking I will probably get closer to finishing. And, I always have on one of my work tables, my girl. She is my muse my very first attempt at a face in acrylics. And she continues with these big eyes to look at me and remind me that I must do more in this new year with faces because I do so love doing them. And she's always there to goad me a little bit, to make me realize that you have to follow the things that make you happy. And she set me on the road to not being too afraid of uh, painting faces. So I'm going to be doing more of these. And hopefully uh, you will watch, enjoy watching my process. I think I'm going to stop sharing now, but, and I'm going to flip this camera again. I hope I can do it without 
causing a calamity. Here we go. Okay. I hope that some of these things that I have been working on have shown you that jumping in with both feet sometimes is the only way. I'm lucky enough to have a watercolor teacher who leads me down a path, teaches me concepts and ideas, and then lets me have at it. I've also gotten much joy out of the decision to get back to trying to find the time, along with my mixed media, which is still the most gratifying thing that I have ever done. Well, very, very, very even and close to my stitchery, but getting back to it I think has been a good thing because, you know, I think it has is shaken a space loose in my mind that will only benefit art. I think that will be it for today. I think I'm actually hearing my own stomach growling. So, I hope you've enjoyed my second vlog. If you do, I would appreciate a thumbs up, a comment, and I would so like it if you would take the time to subscribe to my channel. Bye now. See you soon.